these uh, waves and cycles and uh, all you add all of this together and you have a potential slingshot explosion that is laying out there for the price in gold and silver. The big demand is out there in the future, especially monetary demand. It's when markets crash and, and people get worried and they try and rush back to real money to protect their uh, hard-earned wealth. Uh, a little bit further down in the article, so this is the supply and demand uh, uh, each year uh, when there's more supply than when the supplies are growing and this is when the supplies are shrinking. So uh, further down in the article, you've got the uh, London Bullion Market Association in, uh, in England, their supply of silver on the markets. And you can see this drastic contraction, which is much larger than anything that has happened since 2016 here. I don't have this graph going back any further right now, but this is a pretty dramatic uh, contraction. And it reminds me of what was going on back in 2007 and 2008 before we took a slingshot move. And I think that this is what we are getting set up again uh, for is another slingshot move. So watch my video from last week on how long can silver remain cheap. And that is about the cost of mine production being right at or just below or even higher than the current spot price. So that the all in sustainable mining costs of an operation, uh, you know, the operation is economically uh, not uh, realistic at these prices. And so mines either have to high grade, they have to shut down temporarily, they have to wait for higher prices, or they have to go out and dilute their shares by uh, raising more capital uh, in private placements. So um, uh, when you take all of those together, plus some of these other factors, now Nick Laird from Gold Charts R Us sends me these charts every week. Uh, this is transparent uh, gold holdings. So this is all of the uh, repositories like the Commodities Exchange and the LBMA, uh, mutual funds and ETFs, any place that does reporting that holds silver and gold. So this one is gold. And in the background here, the gold line is the price of gold. And this is how many millions of ounces that are uh, have been accumulated or that are being uh, dishoarded. And you can see that there's accumulation, distribution, accumulation. So the supplies go up and down and up and down and up and down and up big time during this price rise. This is the pandemic uh, price rise. So you had the pandemic plunge of the price of gold and the stock markets. The stop, stock markets kept on going. Gold turned right around and took off like a rocket during this accumulation phase. And you had all of these ounces accumulated. So this is millions of ounces over here. This is the gold price. And you can see the millions of ounces went up very dramatically from 90 all the way up to 160. That is a very dramatic increase. And uh, since then, you've had this distribution here, these, these outflows from the above the identifiable above ground stocks. There's all of these outflows. And I just want to point out that this runs in waves and cycles. They're not perfectly even. I mean, there's big one there. There's very small outflows on some of these cycles. But this is a regular repeating pattern. And so here is silver over the same time period. And you see the same thing of inflows and outflows. Uh, and then all of these outflows that we've had over the past year and a half here. Um, you know, almost two years of, of outflows. Well, that's a uh, one, two, three, that's a five-year chart. Uh, let's go to a 20-year chart. And here, the outflows are not quite as evident. There were more inflows during the big price rise from uh, under $5 to uh, just below, it was $48.50 or something like that. I do want to point out, you'll see uh, silver, has yet to exceed its 1980 high. Gold has already exceeded its 1980 high twice. Uh, everything else in society is multiples of its 1980 price, and silver is still selling 
at a discount to its peak in 1980. Now, that was a, a gigantic peak. It was a bubble. Uh, but still, for something to be at, selling at a discount to its 1980 price, and a severe discount, uh, on the, um, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, silver hit $52.50. It hit 48 something according to stock charts in 2011 here, uh, not $50. There's some people that say $50, but still, that's not above its previous high. And then when you go with weekly or monthly data, uh, the high in 1980 comes way down. When you're going intraday data, that's when you get the uh, 5250 price. But if you look at the amount of outflows that we had here over the past year and a half, uh, they are huge, or the past year, I'm sorry, 2022. So um, then we'll move on to a 50-year chart. So this takes into account 1980, but now this is monthly data. And so when you average the monthly price back in 1980, it comes down uh, below 40, but it was 52.50 on one day. And so... Um, what you see here, though, is this this pattern of sort of waves and cycles. And then the biggest uh, withdrawals, the biggest um, uh, selling, the outflows uh, in the history of this chart uh, in this past year. And it looks to me like all of this is coming to an end. So uh, let's take this information uh, of the supply-demand situation that we started this uh, video with and the uh, crunch of the cost of production being at, or some, in, in some cases, some mines are not profitable now. They are losing. The majority of them are below. The silver's price is below their cost of production. And there's just a few that are actually making a positive cash flow right now. So you add the supply-demand crunch that we've got with less supply coming to the market to the fact that the miners cannot make a profit at it. There's a, on it at this price point. There's no reason for them to dig it up and bring it to market. Those two things have to resolve themselves. And the only way that they can resolve themselves is through a higher price. And then you take a look at these uh, uh, inflows and outflows, investors being interested in, in precious metals and then disinterested. And it looks like the disinterested part is about to end. And what you come up with is that very shortly we could have another one of these slingshot moves. And if any um, uh, anxiety over the economy gets added to this, if people start rushing back to real money, gold and silver, to protect their wealth like they have for the last 5,000 years. Uh, if they do that and demand goes even higher with, with the cost of production above the price that a miner can get for it, uh, and, and then these uh, waves and cycles and uh, all, you add all of this together and you have a potential slingshot explosion that is laying out there for the price in gold and silver 